Hello, welcome back to Retro Break, and welcome to part two of my game room tour. Let's carry on from where we left off in part one by taking a look at the shelves just here next to the ones that we finished up with in the last episode. So there we go, we've got a few boxes here. There's a lot more stored away in the loft or under the bed. Um, this one here is the PlayStation VR aim controller that came with um, Farpoint, which is a really cool VR game. I kept this one just because I like the look of the box and I was very excited to pick it up when I saw it on the top of the shelf in Smith's Games game shop. Next here we have the special edition PS4 Pro, the God of War edition. I was really excited about this game so I had to pick it up uh, when it came out. Unfortunately I missed out on the pre-orders so I actually didn't get it until I managed to find one on eBay for a reasonable price. But I was very happy to actually get it so that's why I've got it displayed there. Um, there's the Wonder Swan that we saw in the last episode. There's also uh, the special edition of Metroid Return of Samus, which is a game that I wasn't that fond of, to be honest. And a game that I do like a lot more is the special edition of Octopath Traveler. And I did an unboxing of this, it's a really really cool special edition. So I'll put a link in the description so you can go and have a look at that. I was really impressed with what Square and Nintendo had put together, so definitely have a look at that. And also here, I'm going to try and sell these at the next MCM Expo, so if you're ever at any of them, come to, come by our table and maybe you can pick up all the Harry books. And underneath there, I don't know if you can see it, maybe just about, there's the Philips CDI console, I guess you can call it a console. I'm waiting until I get the proper controller for it so I can play the Zelda games on there. That's pretty much the only reason to own one of them at this point. So in these drawers here, we've got... A lot of Mega Drive games in this one, and a lot of Dreamcast VMUs as well. I have no idea why I've got so many VMUs, I've got hundreds of them. But yeah, the majority of things in this drawer are Mega Drive games, and a lot of Amiga floppy disks. I don't actually have an Amiga console yet, but I've got loads of Amiga demo disks, for some reason. Not entirely sure why, but yeah. When I do get an Amiga, I'll definitely be doing an episode on all these. I'm really excited to try them out. And there's also the designer's pencil for the Commodore 64 in there as well. And what else is in here? There's a few Neo Geo pocket games as well. So that's it for that draw. I think I'm going to have to get back down on the floor like I did in the last episode for these other ones. So, here we go. So the next one here, this one is full of Commodore 64 games, as you can see. This is jam-packed. I'll do a close-up of some of them. I've probably shown most of them off in videos by this point. So if you want to go and have a look at some of my Commodore collection, definitely... There we go. So if you want to have a look at some of my Commodore collection, definitely go and have a look at them videos. I'll put links to them in the description. I've got some pretty interesting games, like there's the Commodore version of Blade Runner, which is actually pretty interesting. I wouldn't say it's a good game, but it's definitely an interesting game. But yeah, I've got loads of, loads of stuff in here. Considering I didn't get the Commodore that long ago, definitely got a lot of interesting games. And some cartridge games as well, there's Terminator for it. Okay, so we can just about see what's in this drawer here, so what have we got? We've got the Sega Saturn 3D controller for Nights and Dreams and Burning Rangers and a few other games. really love this controller, it's basically a prototype of what went on to become the Dreamcast controller. There's also the Wii Classic controller, this is the one that came with Xenoblade Chronicles. I'm very happy to have that one. And what else? There's my original GameCube controller from when I got the system on launch day. Definitely go and check out my GameCube Memories episode, I had a lot of fun making that one. Uh, what else is in here? There's a steering wheel for the Wii, all sorts of random things some Dreamcast controls and stuff. And then, can you see in this bottom one? Just about, this is just more wires and controllers. There's an iToy for the PlayStation 2, SNES mouse, uh, Xbox 360 controller. There's also the really, really horrible CDI TV remote controller with this awful twisty analog stick thing. That's one of the reasons I'm not using the CDI yet, because I want to get a proper controller because of how bad this one is. Now, if you remember in the last episode I said that Illusion of Time is one of my favourite games ever. Well, this poster behind me, there we go, so this poster behind me here, this is an Illusion of Gaia map, and it also says where to find all the characters in the game. 
I absolutely love this. As I said in the last episode, it's my favourite game ever. So I was really excited to get this poster and it was actually a secret Santa present off Reddit. So I was not expecting this at all. So I really was very, very excited when it turned up. I absolutely love it. There we go. Then on this side of the room, this is where all my screens are and my computer and stuff. This is where I do all my editing for all my videos and where I capture all the gameplay footage as well. So just behind me here, I've got two TVs. This bottom one here is a Sony PVM broadcast monitor. I was really lucky that I knew someone at work who used to work for BBC and he actually gave me this screen free of charge. So I really can't thank him enough. Absolutely fantastic guy. And it is an amazing screen, but I don't use it that much because it doesn't have SCART or anything like that. It only accepts S-Video at the minute. So the only thing I can actually play on there is the Sega Saturn, which at the minute's in the other room. And I've also got the N64 here plugged into another CRT, which I also got from someone from work for free. But this one's not really anything special. This is just one of those cheap CRT TVs that you could get around the time. But it does look really nice if I zoom in there and playing Diddy Kong Racing on it. You can see how bright and colourful it is. I just love how CRTs look for retro games. Really can't go wrong. And as you can see, the N64 that I'm using to play it on is the Pokemon Pikachu edition. And I've also got my coffee there in a Pikachu cup, which I actually forgot about, so bear with me for one second. Just there you can see there's the Commodore 64 as well, which I also got from someone at work. I've been very lucky knowing a lot of people at work who have some retro stuff that they're willing to give me. And the box for the Commodore, if we come back over here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it very well. It's right there in the corner, hidden away. I'll try and find the video where I did my unboxing of it and my initial impressions of the Commodore 64 because I was really excited to get it and it came with all the original instruction manual and stuff as well. So really, really cool to have that. I'm very excited to show you guys in this episode my first ever Commodore 64. And also behind here, we have the computer that I use to edit all my videos on. As you can see, I'm in the process of editing one now. And as you can also see, that's recording my voice up there, which is linked to this Blue Yeti microphone, which I think every YouTuber ever uses. So we've also got here the wireless SN Pro Pad, which is a really, really cool Bluetooth SNES style controller, but it actually works on the, uh, on the Switch and on the Mac and anything else that's Bluetooth compatible so it's a really cool controller to have and it charges through USB-C as well so I really like this controller and also under here there's the tape deck to plug in the Commodore 64 games it is all connected, it's up there so I just pull it out whenever I want to try and load the tape and then watch a YouTube video for an hour or so while it's loading and we've got loads of stuff on this side so here's my other uh, LCD TV. This one's really old. I actually got this one to go to uni with many years ago, but it still works and I use it for recording gameplay of some of the more modern consoles. I've got, if I take the camera back up here, up there you can see I've got the capture card and the OSSC, the open source scan converter, which is a really good way of upscaling retro games. And there next to it I've got the Retro Freak, which is what I use to record most of my retro games because it just goes straight out to HDMI. And there you can see there's the GameCube that I've been playing recently. And below that is the Vectrex. I did a Vectrex video recently as well, so definitely go and watch that one. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description. Also down there, there's the PC Engine Duo R, which is my preferred way of playing PC Engine games. And if I move these bags out of the way, we've also got the Super NT, which is a really nice, high quality replica SNES system. I've also done a review of that, so I'll put that in the description. And there's the Vectrex as well, like I said. And what else to show here? These bags here, these have got some of my latest pickups. And I'll be doing a pickups video soon, so I won't be showing them off just yet. But you can have a sneak peek. There you go. That's all you're seeing for now. And then of course behind me here I've got my Game Boy display cabinet which is something people really like to see so in a lot of my videos I use this as the background as well and I've done loads of different Game Boy collection videos and I'll put them all in the description.
I'm sure a few of you know I'm actually aiming to get a full set of UK released Game Boy games, so I'll definitely be doing some update videos in the future to show how that collection is coming on. And up here, I've got a few more interesting things. There's the Atari Lynx. I did a video about the Lynx at the beginning of the year. I love the console, it's really good. The only thing I don't really like about it too much is the screen display. So I'm looking to get it modded at some point in the future so I can get a really nice, high quality backlight on it. I'd really love that. But the Lynx is a very impressive system. So then next to that we've got the non-skull Pac-Man arcade cabinet which of course I went to the preview event for and I did a very in-depth review of it uh, at the end of last year so I'll put a link to those in the description. We've also got the Hyperkin Superboy which is a really cool way of playing SNES games in a handheld. This is the original version, they've actually released a few more since then but this is quite cool, I mean it's kind of clunky and it's not exactly something you'd want to take around with you but it's definitely an interesting piece of kit. And also there is the Neo Geo Pocket Colour, which I'm planning on doing a video for in the future. Really love it. I actually just picked up a few more Neo Geo Pocket Colour games. There's a bit of a preview, if you can see that. There you go. There's a bit of a preview of one of the games that I'll be showing off very soon. I haven't decided what order I'm going to do my pickups videos in yet. Oh no, so we just turned it on. Yeah, I've been... I've been game shopping in quite a few different places recently and I haven't quite decided what order I'm going to release them in yet but I definitely look forward to them. I've been back to Entertainment World, I've been to GameSmart and I did a bit of shopping in CEX as well so loads to look forward to on the channel so subscribe for those videos coming soon. And what else have we got here? In this... Oh well there's Pachirisu obviously. And in this... Uh, set of drawers here is where I keep all my Game Boy Advance games and there's a few memory cards in there and stuff as well. I'll do some close-ups of these so you can have a look in a bit more detail but this is where I store them all. I've got quite a lot of Game Boy Advance games, it's one of my favourite systems to collect for but there is a lot of shovelware as well so it's kind of hit or miss and there's the third tray there. I also have this cool Game Boy Money Box which I'm using to store all my change in and I don't know if you can see that or not but the screen actually changes when you turn it. I think you can just about make it out. So it's from Mario Land 2 and I just think that's really cool. There we go. So in these drawers here there's all sorts of random things. I won't go into loads of depth because most of it's just a mess but there's a few interesting bits and pieces. So here's my uh, PlayStation Vita that I got in Japan which is the really nice Miku edition one. This was the Vita that I was looking for when I was in Japan so I was very excited to get it and of course I'm a big fan of the Project Diva games so I'm really really happy to have that and I love the Vita, it's a great system. It's such a shame that it didn't do very well, I really wish it had done better because there was a lot of potential there. Um, let's see if I've got anything else interesting in here. Most of it's just things like random instruction manuals and posters and leaflets and that sort of things and a few magazines. There's Wireframe, that's a really good magazine if you're in the UK. Definitely recommend checking out Wireframe. It's got a lot of in-depth interviews with game developers and stuff so it's definitely something that I really enjoy reading. And what else is here? Some of the Switch Player magazines as well. There's a lot more down there which I'll get to in a second. This cover here was actually drawn by my girlfriend and she's also done a few of the other ones as well which I will show you when I get to the rest of them. I don't even know where to begin. There's a lot of loose discs and things which I'm kind of worried about scratching but I haven't really got the boxes for them anymore. There's also some more Switch Player magazines. There's this weird uh, clip-on magnifying glass for the Game Boy with a light in it. It doesn't got any batteries in. Now this is kind of interesting. This came from the Super Famicom guidebook which I've got in the other room. And this is a load of high quality photos of the Super Nintendo. I didn't really know what to do with them so I've just stored them away for now but maybe I'll put them up somewhere at some point. Now I'm back on the floor again, two more drawers to go. This one's got a load of really cool retro magazines. I have a load more back at my parents house and I will try and find a very old video where I laid them all out on the floor and it took up the entire room.
But there's just a few here, there's some Sega ones, there's Mean Machines which is a really uh, popular magazine from back in the day, and Total Nintendo as well which is a really good one. What else have we got here? Nintendo Magazine System, that was the original official Nintendo Magazine so that one's really cool to have. And what else? There's also Sega Pro which is another really great Sega magazine, so I just love looking at the old magazines and seeing what people thought about the games that were coming out at the time. So it's a little bit of an addiction of mine, but I'm very, I'm very happy to have them. And if I had more room, I would love to just collect every single retro gaming magazine that was ever released. So maybe that will happen one day if I get a mansion. And then this last drawer here is another drawer that's just full of controllers and, and wires and stuff, so nothing too exciting there. Now, if I move the camera this way, and you see what's underneath the desk. So under the desk here, I have a box here that's also full of controllers. There's a arcade stick for the Sega Saturn. Really nice arcade stick. I got this one when I went to visit my sister at uni in Chester. So, from the indoor market. There's also the Pokemon N64 controller. There's my favourite SNES controller ever, the SN Pro Pad, which I mentioned in the last episode. So I've got the box up there. There's a few Commodore 64 controllers. And then also under here, I've got this Vectrex box. I'll bring this out. There you go, so you can see that it's a bit battered, but it's still cool to have. This is the original box that the Vectrex came in, and it's just full of all sorts of bits and pieces. I'll pull a few more interesting bits out for you. So this is kind of interesting. This is the PAL Turbo Graphics. Something that a lot of people don't even know that we actually got here in the UK. It's basically the same as the American Turbo Graphics, but it's been limited to 50 hertz. So it's not as good as that version. Uh, what else have we got in here? There's the Crash Bandicoot hat that Numskull sent me for the Crash Team Racing episode, which I did a while ago. I'll put a link in the description for that. And there's the other hat as well, so they were really cool. There's one of the issues of my favourite retro gaming magazine, GBX. I think I've mentioned this one in the past. I actually showed off all the videotapes that came with this magazine in the last episode. Definitely my favourite magazine from that era. I'll definitely be doing a video about them in the future because I do have every single issue of it. It's just a case of where to store it all. There's also loads of other random bits and pieces in here. There's the box for the Mega Man and Android. This is kind of cool. If I zoom in slightly, you can see that. This is the uh, Hanafuda cards collection that came with Club Nintendo back in the day. And as you can see, these are basically the original cards that Nintendo made before they went into games. So it's really cool to have this. I've never actually tried to play it um, completely. There are instructions in there. I couldn't quite figure out what to do, but maybe I'll try and give it a go in the future. But yeah, that's something really cool to have. It's a nice bit of Nintendo history. And something else kind of random that I'd never seen before, before I got it. This is very much sun damaged, but it's still quite cool. It's the back of a lorry that says Mario 64 in it. And I think it was for some kind of promo for the game before it was released. And these little doors at the back open up as well. If anyone else has ever seen this before, let me know, but I've never actually seen it shown off anywhere, so I figured I would show this because it's a pretty interesting thing. And there's a lot more in this box that I could go into detail on, but I'm not going to do that now because this video would go on forever. So this box here, this was me experimenting. I was trying to do a backlit Game Boy, but it didn't quite work, but that's as far as I got with it, as you can see. It's in pretty poor condition. I kind of messed up a little bit, but I'd definitely like to try again in the future, try and get one working. I've kept this box because it's got all of the stuff in to try and do it with, so maybe in the future I'll do a video about me trying to mod Game Boys. It's definitely something I'd like to get into more in the future. And also down here is this box here, which is full of consoles. So we've got the Mega Drive, nowhere to store these, that's why they're all just sat here in the box. Is the PAL SNES and another SNES for some reason. The little PS1 classic, the PS1 Mini. The second version of the PlayStation 1, the really nice compact version. And there's a NES in here as well. The original NES that I had while I was growing up. 
And you can tell it's the original one because I remember drawing this blue line on it when I was little. Don't ask why, I don't know. Seemed like a good idea at the time. So if we look over here, if I can pull this out. Here's a big box full of NES games. I'll do some close-ups, there's a load of different games here. There's Mega Man 4, like I said in the last episode, one of my all-time favourites. All sorts of things in here, there's some SNES games in there as well. Um, Kabuki Quantum Fighter, that's a pretty good NES game. I'll definitely do a video in the future. There's also some kind of rare games that are just sat in here. There's Terra Nigma, the PAL version. There's Chrono Trigger, I should really put that one back in the box, I think. Um, Defenders of the Crown, that was one of the very first games that I ever played as well. So I'll leave that out and do a close-up. There you go, there's way too much to go through in this one video, but here's some of my unboxed Super Famicom and SNES games. There's the Japanese version of Terra Enigma. Yeah, loads of stuff in here. I'll go into a separate video about all my unboxed SNES games at some point. But as you can see, there's quite a lot in there. I think there's just over 100. And then the last thing to look at in this video is these shelves here. They're not super exciting, but I figured I may as well make this a complete tour. So in this first one we've got some more controllers and stuff. I'll pull a few interesting things out. There's the Atari Jaguar controller, one of the weirdest controllers ever. As you can see it's got a full number pad on the bottom and these three face buttons. This is really cool, this was sent to me by a friend on Discord. This is the Dogbone NES controller, which is a lot more comfortable to hold than the regular NES pad, if I held it the right way up anyway. So yeah, really happy to have this one, thank you so much for that. And... Oh, in here. Here's a second one of my favourite SNES controllers, the SN Pro Pad. Absolutely love that, as I just said. Right. Second one down, this one is where all of the magazines and stuff are. There's the rest of the Switch Player magazines. My girlfriend also drew this cover here. That's really cool to have. Got some random stuff in here. Here's a Nintendo trivia book. Here's some stickers for the uh, SNES. You might have seen them on my laptop over there. And there's some more Zelda ones. And some Mario fridge magnets. And here's all the other um, Switch Player magazines. I've got all of them since day one, I really love that magazine. Go and have a look on Patreon if you want to pledge some money and get them all. And also here are a few of my face plates for the 3DS. I've got some pretty rare ones, like there's the Xenoblade one, there's the Smash Bros one, the Majora's Mask one, and I've got the Ambassador Edition one somewhere as well, so they're really cool to have. And here's something I was very excited to find while I was in Japan last time. This is an arcade stick for the PC Engine. As you can see, it still has the turbo fire switches on the side there for the PC Engine, and it plugs in at the front. Very cool controller, very nice. Feels really good to play shooting games with this. So I was really excited to find it when I did. And you can only just about see this one, but in the bottom drawer here, there's everything that wouldn't fit anywhere else, really. There's another Switch Player magazine. There's some retro gamer issues. There's this art of RPGs. I've also got all the issues of Hyperplay RPG, which is another really cool fanzine. Um, they haven't made a new issue in a while, but if you want to go and check out these past issues, I'll put a link to their website in the description. Also in here, I've got a few Sega Saturn consoles. So here's my Japanese Saturn, which unfortunately I broke by plugging in the wrong power source. And here's my original UK one, but as I'm sure you know by now, I've also got a modded version which is in the living room at the minute, so I'm going to do a little quick tour of what's in there because there is a lot more than what you can see in this room. So thank you for watching so far. So here's where I do all my gaming when I'm not in the game room. There's my Nintendo Switch there and the case where I store all of my games 
I really need a bigger case because as you can see I've already had to double up all the slots and that's my girlfriend's PS3. At the minute we're playing through um, Resident Evil 3 on the PS1 which is really good and here's a look at some of my PS3 games. As you can see I've got quite a lot of PS3 games, it's definitely one of my favourite systems ever. It's got so many great games, here's a look at just some of them. Let me know if you spot any that you really like. Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls, they're fantastic games. Resident Evil 5, Tales of Zillia, Tomb the, the Tomb Raider remaster was amazing. Enslaved, that's another brilliant game. If you haven't played Enslaved, I'd highly recommend that one. Art and Elico, I was kind of disappointed by that game compared to the PS2 ones, but it's still okay. It's not amazing though. Uh, Burnout Paradise, that's one of my favourite games on the system. There's a Project Diva game up there. And now I'm going to do the same for my PS4 games. I don't like the PS4 quite as much as I enjoyed the PS3. I still think the PS3 was a better system overall. I mean, the PS4's still got about a year left in its life, so maybe it'll get better. The main thing I really enjoy on the PS4 at the minute is PlayStation VR. As you can see in this set of games here, I've got quite a few VR games. I'm really, really enjoying it. My favourite game is Beat Saber, but unfortunately that hasn't come out physically. You can see Astro Bot down there, that's another one of my favourite VR games. And the Rick and Morty game for it as well, that one's just hilarious. And Detroit Become Human, Mega Man 11. It does have some, fast, some fantastic games, but maybe not quite as many as the PS3. And then this is my main TV, this is the Samsung Q9 4K TV, absolutely love it. And underneath here, as you can see, I've got the Dreamcast, which has got a Miku on there and lots of Miku stickers as well. Unfortunately, it stopped working, so I will have to get another system at some point in the near future. And there's my modded Sega Saturn. Uh, if you hold down the reset button, it swaps between 50 and 60 hertz. And it also has NTSC compatibility as well, which is fantastic. And there's my um, PS4 Pro, the God of War edition, and my Wii U. And there's the amazing Wii U case that my girlfriend made for me back when my username was Nintendo Wii on everything. Uh, if any of you guys are still around from the Nintendo Wii days, hello. And there you can see my PS2 and the Xbox One that I actually won on a competition on Twitter, which was just amazing. And now I'm going to take a quick look over the other side of the room and show you just a few of the art books and just general books that I've got in this cabinet here as well. As you can see, quite a few Mega Man art books. I really love the art in Mega Man and the Atelier games as well. And here's a display cabinet. You can see some of my girlfriend's plushies up the top there. And this is where we store some of our more expensive figures and a lot of the amiibos as well. Not all of them, but most of them. I would try and like to collect a full set at some point in the future, but it does get kind of expensive. So there we go, finally come to the end of my room tour for 2019. Thank you so much for all the support and all the views that you've given me for doing this. I really hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming going around my room and telling you some of my favourite things that I've got. Stay tuned for loads more really exciting episodes coming soon. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time for another episode. Goodbye.